It's a very good morning, dear listener. You are tuned to a Christian voice in your home. This is Radio Maria Morning Catechesis with me, Father Gerald. How are you doing, dear friend? I hope that you are fine in the Lord this day God has given us. We want to thank everything God has done unto us. And today in our Morning Catechesis, dear listener, the theme of the day is the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ the body and blood of Christ. In other words, we call it Corpus Christi. And Corpus Christi comes second Sunday after Pentecost. It always comes on the second Sunday after Pentecost. Dear friend, this uh, feast is very, very important. Because allow me to say, to share this with you. One of the most famous churches in Italy is the Cathedral of Orvieto. The Cathedral's Gothic facade boasts of a burst relief of mosaic works, of bright blues and gleaming golds. So in the dome, in the cathedral, uh, we have uh, an architectural masterpiece for which a master plan is available. In 1263, a priest by the name Peter of Prague was on his way to Rome. He was a pious priest, but was experiencing some intellectual doubts about the faith. So, he decided to make a pilgrimage to stretch and to strengthen, to strengthen his own vocation, to renew his belief in the mystery of the Eucharist. He stopped in a place called Bolsena, a town 14 miles uh, from Orvieto. So while saying Mass in the church of St. Christine, Christina, he witnessed the host which he had just consecrated bleed over his hands unto the corporal. Somewhat taken back, he tried to hide what was happening. But when this was no longer possible, he stopped the mass and went to Orvieto, where Pope Urban IV was living at that time. After investigating the priest's story, the Pope had the corporal and the consecrated host brought in solemn procession to Bolsena, to Orvieto, and placed in the cathedral. The blood-stained corporal can still be seen there today in a large reliquary made of silver and translucent enamel. So before his election as Pope Urban IV, Jacques Pantaleon had been the Archbishop of Liege and St. Juliana Annan of Liege urged him to institute a solemnity in honor of the Eucharist. So dear listener, after approving the miracle of the host that bled at Bolsena, the Pope honored that request. He instituted the feast of Corpus Christi. He commissioned St. Thomas Aquinas to write the mass for this uh, celebrating the real presence of Christ in the, in the, in the, in the Eucharist. So that's the origin. I'm giving a historical perspective of this solemnity of celebration of the body and blood of Christ. But there is a theology, a deep theology of the real presence of Jesus in the body and blood of Christ in the blessed Eucharist. So the church's teaching on the real presence was no medieval innovation. It is firmly rooted in the scripture. If you read John chapter 6 verse 32 to 71, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16 to 17. And you see Jesus' words at the last supper 
when he said, this is my body. This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Uh, to be taken literally, if you read Mark chapter 14, verse 22 to 24, and also Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 28, and then Luke chapter 22, verse 19 to 20. So the Eucharist is Jesus' body and blood, soul and divinity. When the priest repeats those words at the consecration during Mass, Christ becomes present in the Eucharist. So, dear listener, the appearance of the bread and wine remains after the words of the consecration at Mass. But there is no longer bread, no longer wine. It is the body and blood together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, the whole Christ is truly, really, and substantially contained. If you read the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1374. So, at the heart of the life of the Catholic Church has always been the celebration of the Eucharist. Or the Mass as Catholics, as we Catholics say, call it. So, the Eucharist comes from the Greek word of thanksgiving. Eucharistia, Eucharistia. So Jews at the time of Jesus sometimes used the word Eucharistia to describe thanks offering. A special sacrifice that was celebrated in Jerusalem temple. If you read the gospel of Mark chapter 14 verse 23, the gospel used uh, forms of the word to describe Jesus' action. When he instituted the Mass, he gave thanks. So taking part in the Mass is the hallmark of the Catholic, central and crucial to our Catholicity. Dear listen, the Eucharist is the most precious uh, gift the Lord has given to the Church. It is a mystery to be pondered, to be revered, and at the heart of this is the richness of our Catholic teaching on the Eucharist. So we offer it in confidence. For this mystery is indeed a life-giving truth. A pearl of great price. So when we are preparing this coming Sunday for the, pen, uh, for the, uh, for the celebration, the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, we need to understand exactly what we are celebrating. As I said, this solemnity always comes second Sunday after Pentecost. So, dear listener, the Lord on the night before he suffered on the cross shared one last meal with his disciples. During this meal, our Lord instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. He did not he did this in order to perpetuate the sacrifice of the cross throughout the ages and to entrust to the church his spouse a memorial of his death and resurrection. As the Gospel of Matthew tells us, while they were eating, Jesus took bread and said the blessing broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat of it, for this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, drink from it, it is all for you. For this is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. Christ himself, living and glorious, is present in a true, a real, substantial manner, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. This was defined by the Council of Trent, uh, Trent in 1640 and then 1651. So dear listener, during, as we prepare for the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. It requires sobriety and preparation, due preparation. Number one, 
living a sacramental life. So the Eucharistic Jesus, body, soul, and divinity is really present. So when the priest repeats those words at the consecration during Mass, Christ becomes present to us in the Eucharist. Get it by faith, dear listener. Christ becomes present to us in the Eucharist. That's why we revere Eucharist. We give it um, reverence. We adore the Lord in the Eucharist. The appearance of bread and wine remain after the words of the consecration at Mass, but there is no longer bread and wine. It is the body and blood together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, the whole church, Christ is truly, really, substantially contained. We will meet again. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.